Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. Today we're taking a look at the new iPad 9th generation. Here I have the 256 gigabyte cellular model, but of course it goes all the way down to 64 gigs and Wi-Fi for $329, which is a really great starting price. We're gonna go over tips and tricks for getting the most out of iPadOS 15, as well as all the best accessories, including a couple new ones that I've never showed off for the iPad, which I'm really excited about, and I think really add to the experience. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over over the very beginner basics. So if you already know how to operate the iPad, you can skip forward and you can check out the bottom of the video where it has the chapter markers and you can go to whatever section you need. So starting with the unboxing of this, it's pretty similar to what you would expect if you've used an iPad before. Inside the box, you get the iPad up front and underneath you get a lightning to USB-C cable as well as the USB-C wall charger and this is a 20 watt charger which we'll talk about a little bit later then you get some paperwork and a sim ejection tool in my case as well as an apple sticker so nothing too crazy or different here now we're taking a look at the ipad itself both ipads come with the black front and you get either a silver or a black back to it and then if you get the cellular model you'll have this cellular antenna up top and on the back you just have your camera and there's no flash on this and then up top we have a power button on the left hand side of the back as well as a headphone jack which is great to see on this and then on the right side of this device we do have our volume buttons up and down and then on the left hand side this is our smart connector which will be used for different accessories which i'll show you in this video and then up front we have our home button which also doubles as touch id and you can press that to unlock your device now when your iPad's unlocked, if you go into an application to go home, you can obviously click the home button once to go home or twice to go into your recent applications or you can hold it to get to Siri. But you can also use the iPad's multi-touch gestures. So if you wanna go home, you can just swipe up like that. Just quickly swipe up. If you wanna get to your multitasking, you can go up and hold just like that. But there's also nice gestures such as being able to close an app using the four finger multitask or going to your recent applications by dragging up with four fingers. And these go back many, many years with these gestures. And you can also go back and forth between apps with the four fingers left and right. And I think what's even easier than that is just using the new side to side gestures of kind of up and over just like this. And then finally, if you wanna go into your multitasking, you can go up and hold just like that. So on the cheapest iPad, you actually have the most options for navigating and multitasking. So again, just to show you, if you wanna go into your multitasking, you can go four fingers up, you can go up and hold, or you can do double click of your home button, whatever is easiest or most convenient for you. Now, if you wanna take a screenshot, it's home button and power button, just like older devices. And if you tap on this, you can annotate it and circle things or do whatever you need to do. You can also use this new text mode to highlight any text in anything that you screenshot. So here I can select all of these elements and copy it and I could paste it somewhere else. Now two more gestures that are important to know would be control center, swiping down from the top right of your iPad. And there you get access to quick controls such as your brightness. And if you hold on that, you get things such as your dark mode on or off and you get other great controls that are just really nice to have. And you can customize all of these settings under settings and control center, which is super nice to have and get exactly what you want there. And then for notification center, you swipe down from the very top and then you can get your notifications. Super simple. Now quickly in terms of accessories, the iPad actually does have a really nice option with Apple's keyboard folio. And I love this because the inside of this is the really nice microfiber. So I have no problems with putting it down on the iPad. It's super slim and it's a really excellent folio. So again, you can see it adds almost nothing to the iPad, but then it unfolds into a really nice keyboard. Although it's not my favorite typing experience because these keys are a little bit uh, on the mushy side and the fabric is not super clicky or responsive. It's still a great option if you want something that really just folds onto the back of your iPad and you barely notice that it's there. So I really, really do enjoy this keyboard for this particular use case scenario. And I think it's actually a really excellent case. Of course, you can always pair something like a Bluetooth keyboard. So any Bluetooth keyboard will work. This is the Logitech Keys, a super portable keyboard that's, as you can see, about the size of the iPad in terms of length there. So um, pretty compact and, and very slim to throw in a bag. So that's an option as well. 
But then Logitech also makes their own full keyboard case for the iPad, which includes a slot for connecting your Apple Pencil, but it also features a trackpad, which is awesome. And the trackpad works very well on the iPad. And this is great for scrolling through long documents or working on Google Docs or a spreadsheet or stuff like that with a really nice keyboard, a function row, and then you can detach the keyboard if you just want to use this stand. It is a pretty bulky case overall, which is the big downside, but it's about the same price as Apple's. So if you want something bulky, you can get a lot of good use out of this case. Now in terms of stylus options, of course you can use your Apple Pencil, and this is the Apple Pencil first generation, not the second generation. If you don't wanna spend the $99 for the Apple Pencil, you can spend a little bit less money at the Logitech Crayon, which is still a pretty good option, and it's still great for writing and taking notes and doing whatever else you need to do. Or you can go really cheap with something like this from Pinoval, that's $30, and also works very well. So that's great too, and it even has the magnet on the sides. Now if you buy the Apple Pencil, you're gonna have to charge it by plugging it into your iPad or even like your iPhone. But if you wanna charge using a cable, you can go into the paperwork of the pencil, and not only do you get an extra tip, but you also get this little adapter that will allow you to plug it into a cable. So that's good to have if you don't wanna plug it into your iPad all the time. I also just recently discovered this little magnetic sleeve, which I love. So it acts kind of as like a grip for your pencil, which is nice, adds some comfort to it and a little bit of texture, but it also comes with this little magnet with a sticker on the back and you can attach this to your iPad or any case and then you can magnetically attach the pencil to it super securely, kind of like you can do with the Apple Pencil second generation with the iPad Pro. But what I also like about this is if you use Apple's keyboard folio, you can use this to get a super secure attachment to the side of the case so that it is not going anywhere. As you can see, I'm doing this pretty hard and it's just not going anywhere. I'll leave this link down in the description. It's only like 10 bucks uh, if you want to check it out as well as these other products. Now, unfortunately, this iPad does not have USB-C like the iPad Pro has. So if you want to use accessories with it, such as an SD card or an HDMI port or a USB port or anything like that for connecting any type of accessory, you're gonna to have to use the lightning adapter. You can't use any type of USB-C hub. And these work well enough if you wanna connect an SD card and load some files from your camera or a movie or something like that. You are able to do that and it works well enough for the basic needs, but nothing crazy there. And finally, Apple does give you the 20 watt charger in the box with your iPad. But if you want something even more compact and faster and cheaper, you can get a bunch of different third party options. This one's from Spigen, I have one from Anchor and some other brands as well. That can be 20 or 30 watts for smaller sizes than Apple's. So these are great for throwing it in a bag and taking it around with you. In case you wanna keep one at home and one for the road, there's tons of really great options out there these days for like 10, 15, 20 bucks. They can even charge faster than Apple. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, before we transition from hardware to software tips and tricks, one piece of software that I wanna tell you about is from the channel sponsor, iMobi, and it can save you a lot of headaches and it's called AnyFix. If you've ever run into your iPad or your iPhone stuck on the Apple logo or in recovery mode or on a boot loop or a lot of other problems, AnyFix can help solve all of those. Whether it's because you're upgrading to iOS 15 or some other issue, and if you don't want to stay with iOS 15 and you actually want to downgrade to iOS 14, you can do that with this software. And there are other fixes for 130 plus system issues and three repair modes that ensure the highest success rate to fix any issues you have on your iPhone or iPad. If you want to learn more, you can check out the link in the description to check out iMobi AnyFix. All right, so now that we have kind of the hardware and the basics out of the way, I want to go into some tips for this iPad. So I showed you one already, and this is the new quick text or quick type on the iPad, and it's really great. And you can do it with a pencil or without. So if you have a stylus, you can use that for pulling it up from the corner just like this, and you can compose a new one or scroll through your old ones as well. And this is really great for pulling up a note wherever you are uh, on your iPad. And if you're on a web page, you can attach a link to it and say note so that anytime I go to a web page again, it'll show me this little note pop up in the corner, which I can tap on and it will bring up that note. So every time I visit this in the future, so that's, that's really cool. And again, you can do this 
with a pencil or without. So just go in from the corner. Now, if you have an Apple Pencil or a stylus, you can also screenshot from the bottom left-hand corner, which is great too. Now, some of my favorite iPadOS 15 features would be the ability to change font size in any specific application. So if you go into your control center and you throw on text size, you're able to customize your text size on a per app basis. So we'll go here. I can choose the text size for all my apps or I can choose it for Safari only. So if there's an app that you want your text size to be a lot bigger, you can customize that there. So I have really big fonts here or I can make it much smaller just for Safari. Now, I'm also a big fan of the change to multitasking on the iPad. So now it's easier than ever to pull up any two applications that you want. So if you're in app number one, you can tap on the three dots at the top and then you'll get this little pull up screen. And from here, you can choose to put it on the side as kind of a sidebar, or you can choose to do split screen or full screen. But you can also drag down from the top and drag it, just flick it to the side just like that. And then you can choose any app that you want to go beside it. So I'm gonna say for this, I want Notability to the side. So now I have Notability off to the side just like that. And if I wanted to make this full screen, I could easily do that. So now it's full screen. I can easily put it back to split screen and choose Safari just like that. So it's just gotten easier than ever to get into multitasking. And of course, you still have the ability to slide in apps from the side on either direction, just like that. So you can have three apps open and then you can open up a fourth app if you do a picture in picture. So, you know, from YouTube or Safari or any other media playing app, you can have a video playing as well. So the multitasking on here is awesome. I also really like the new focus mode. So doing this by long pressing on the do not disturb options, you get your focus mode settings and you can customize these in your settings app. But what I really like about this is that when you turn on a specific focus mode, it has the ability to take away or add different home pages to really let you focus on what you want to focus on. It also gives you ability to hide badges so I could turn on a focus mode and it will hide all the numbers for the notifications on all my apps to again, let me focus and it can dim my lock screen and more. So there are a lot of really great features that go along with focus on the iPad that really allow you to be less distracted and you can choose what and who can contact you and more. So I'm a big fan of focus on the iPad. Now, if you're ever on a web page and you want to be spoken to to kind of read it to like an audiobook, kind of, you can drag down with two fingers iOS 15 to the general public. Apple stops signing iOS 14.8. Anthony Bouchard, October 4th, 2021. A couple of Mondays ago, Apple officially released. And I can choose how fast I want it and more. So this is a great accessibility feature that I really like. And to activate this, you can go into settings, accessibility, and spoken content. And you turn on speak screen on or off, and then you just swipe down with two fingers speak just like selection. that and it will read what's on the screen. I also like the accessibility shortcut option. And I turn on reduce white points, so that way when I triple click my iPad, it'll dim my screen so that it can get super dim when I'm using it at night, which also shows off all the fingerprints. But that's a really great feature, and I like having reduced white point. We can also use things such as color filters, So you can make your screen black and white, which also can help you to use it a little bit less. There's a lot of nice little accessibility features that you can turn on and experiment with to help you maybe use your iPad less or more efficiently or something like that. And then you also have the per app settings, so you can add a specific app and add specific accessibility settings so that when you go onto Twitter, it'll be you know black and white or whatever, something like that. Or Kindle, it'll read to you like an audiobook. So it's really nice to be able to customize the accessibility shortcut and the other options. Now in Safari, there's a couple nice features. For one, of course, you can customize the wallpaper of your home screen. So if you go down to edit, you can choose the wallpaper you want as the background. You can also add an image of your own. But also if you hold down the AA button up top, the, the font button, it'll automatically put it you into reader mode, which I really like. Reader mode is super clean for reading articles and web pages. And then you can also really quickly hide your status bar or your menu bar by just swiping up on it. And then you have a really minimal experience, which kind of emulates a reader mode wherever you are. And then you can just tap on it again to bring it up when you need to access something. And now there's also the tab grouping. So if you click on the little menu bar or the sidebar on the left-hand side, you can pull up a tab group and you can create a new one. So I'll call this one study. 
So now when I go here, I can have a tab group that's just for studying. So if I have a bunch of different research articles and things like that, this will be really handy for, again, research projects or anything that has a kind of a unified theme with the tabs. So next is center stage. So as you look at my iPhone, which is showing the iPad's feed, as I move from left to right, you can see the camera on the iPhone shifting or the feed on the iPhone shifting. So as I go up and down, you can see that my iPad's camera follows me, which is really cool. So you can see it moves around the shot and the frame with me. And you turn this on and off in this setting here, and you see that it will no longer follow me. By clicking this, it'll follow me. So that's on FaceTime, and it can move around with you, and you can also use this on Zoom. And also just in the camera app, on the front-facing camera, you have the super wide-angle shot that you can get, so you can get a ton of stuff in the frame, which is really cool for whatever you want to do. Get some good lighting, and you'll get some decent front-facing video on this iPad with the wide-angle camera. So that's about it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll leave links to everything down in the description so you can check out all the accessories I mentioned. Thanks for watching.